Hello, and welcome to Running the Table, the podcast where we run through everything on the table in the world of sports. I'm Drew Westland. Alongside me, as always, Tim Giannini. And today we got more March Madness predictions. We've gone through each of the rounds and now only four remain. That's right. We have the final frontier, the final four. Kansas, Villanova, Duke, and North Carolina are the last team standing. So we're going to break down those two matchups and what the potential national championship game could look like. So, Tim, are you ready to go? We got a final four of blue, so let's run it. Four blue bloods in the final four. But first, let's recap how we did last round. In the Elite Eight, I went even Steven going two and two. And Tim, you caught a game. You went three and one. That brings my overall record to 42 and 18. Your record is 39 and 21. So in theory, with you being three games back and there being three games left. I would have to go different than you on every single matchup and be right every single time. For a I tie. Don't think that's, I don't think that's happening because I have a feeling at least one of these games, we are going to have the, uh, the same prediction here. Uh, so we'll see how we'll see how that ends up. But I'm bl- OK with falling short. I at least kept it close the whole time. Yeah, you did. Hey, and our records are nothing to, you know, sniff yeah. at. It's pretty overall, good. I mean, we did pretty solid in terms of and overall. It also does help is like in terms of overall bracket wise, we didn't have to predict all this at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. This is predicting every single round as it goes or we know who is uh, facing each other on any given day. So but either way, I'm, I'm pretty proud of how we did. Still not bad. No. So without further ado. Let's get to the predictions. So the first game that we got to cover is Kansas and Villanova. The Kansas Jayhawks reached the final four by schlacking the crap out of the Miami Hurricanes, uh, well. 76 to 50. It was a very ugly first half where my actually, Miami actually had a six point lead, 35 to 29. And then Kansas turned it on and did not. When look I saw bad. that at halftime, I was like, oh, Mm-hmm. This one might be interesting. And then I saw the final. I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah. I mean, when you score 15 points in the second half, that doesn't usually put you in a very good position to win. But it also didn't help that Kansas just completely caught fire as well. Yeah, Kansas scored 47 in the second half. They lit the court on fire, running through yep. everybody in their path. And me, who was, rooting, who was rooting for Miami, had picked Kansas with my head. But my heart was rooting for Miami. Once I saw it halftime, I'm like, you know what? Screw the pick. Let's go win. They gave me hope, and they and the let pick, me down. And the pick came right back into the, the field of view. It's like, all right, well, at least reality won on this one. Reality did win. I mean, that's not to take away from anything that Miami did this year. It was no, they had a great season, season and especially with this this run to the uh, – to the elite eight they, they showed that they very much could play with just about everybody they just happened to uh go cold and, and deal with some foul problems right at the, the wrong time yeah they were picked to finish 12th in a 15 team acc this year and they made the elite eight for first time in school history so congratulations to miami but kansas is going on to the final four we're there they will face villanova who defeated Houston in an ugly, ugly defensive dogfight from start to finish. It quite literally was a first to 50 type game because Villanova won 50 to 44. Yep. Both teams shot a little under 30%, around like 28% from the field. And it just wasn't a very good game if you're a fan of offense. If you're a fan of defense, however, you would have loved this game. But Villanova, when it came down to it, they knew how to win. And in winning time, the better team moves on. So, Tim, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I mean, for for this one, what I think was the the most interesting thing to come out of it is for for Villanova, of course, moving on. um, Losing Justin Moore with that injury is going to hurt them a lot. A uh, big role player for them, scores the ball a, a lot for them. But for that game specifically and what they did to come out on top in Houston, um, we've talked about, and I know I've, I've mentioned this quite a few times as they've, they've made their run through this tournament, um, Villanova's free throw shooting. They are one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. And in that game, they went 15 for 15, perfect from well, the Well, Tim, line. here's a little statistical nugget. 
Villanova yeah. is not just one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country this year. They are the they're about great, to be the best of all time, right? They are the greatest free they're throw on shooting team ever. They are yeah. on track to be the greatest free throw shooting team of all time. So that's a testament to <laughs> that, Villanova. That certainly, that certainly helps your chances. Yes, it does. And when you preach free throws, which you clearly put an importance on being able to make your free throws down the stretch to potentially put away an opponent or capitalize on an opponent's mistakes. If you're down, yep. there's no better team in the history of college basketball. That's been able to do that up to this point than this 2021, 2022 Villanova Wildcats team. So, and, it, yeah, it, and it's, I, it's a very big part of why they're here. Yeah. I just, I think, yeah, it's a 100% a big reason of why they're here. Cause they haven't necessarily blown out other than the first round where they beat Delaware by 20. They haven't really blown out a whole lot of teams. So those free throws down the stretch are very crucial and have helped them at least make some of those wins a little bit more comfortable. Well, uh, you know, especially for you, four. Tim, where you as a former basketball player, I know you have been hammered into your head. Free throws are free, free throws. <laughs> make your free throws. Yes. You got to get, you got to get as much as you can from the knowing your basketball background. I know that has been hammered into your head every single practice of every single day. And so it it only makes sense. It's in my blood now. And it's just one of those things of (laughs) it's, it's one of those things that I gravitate to first when I look at a team is like, if you, if you shoot well from the free throw line, that is going to pay you dividends when you're not playing your best basketball. And that's what can help get you out of a rut. Even just the simple concept of seeing the ball go through the basket. If you're having a little bit of a rough day, even if it's just from the free throw line can really jumpstart teams. Yeah. So in terms of this final four matchup, Kansas versus Villanova, two very, very well coached basketball teams, two very, very well-deserving teams to be here. They're both talented. They both do really great things. Well, however, for me, Watching the basketball that Kansas played in the second half against Miami was probably the best basketball that I've seen played from any team all year. It'll be a tough battle, but like you mentioned, Justin Moore being out for Villanova, that's going to be huge. And I think that right there is going to be the kicker. And I see Kansas advancing to the national championship game. Yeah, I mean, you point out that second half for Kansas in that that game is like you see what happens when they turn it on, and even when and, they and have, if they play basketball like even a little bit like that, good luck stopping them. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those. It's one of those things where it's like even when Miami did a, a particularly good job to hold them, I held them under thirty in the first half. It's like how long can you hold this Kansas team for? They're really hard to hold down for forty minutes of basketball, and you've seen so out of some of these Villanova performances. They haven't always shot the ball the best, and they've they've had to win these gritty, grinded out defensive games. That's going to be really hard against a Kansas team that has proven that they can play offense at that high of a level. On top of the fact that you lose Justin Moore, I just don't know if I see an outcome where Villanova is able to stop enough of Kansas's high powered offense, keep themselves out of foul trouble, and shoot the ball well enough to come out on top on this one. So my gut just has got to stay with Kansas here. Yeah, and it's 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 interesting because um, Kansas and Villanova are two teams that you have picked the entire way. You have not deviated from either one of those teams, so it was it's interesting. Just two to really see. good teams. <laughs> yeah, you've picked Kansas in every single round. You've picked Villanova in every single round. Like these next few teams, I can't exactly say the same. I was gonna say, and I did predict a, a, a decent amount of number one upsets along the way. So for me to that stick you with did Kansas this whole way, so it's. Uh, it showed how much I believe in not only their, their, their coaching, but just the, the style of, of team that they have and the talent that they've got. Well, we got one more game. And the next Final Four matchup that we have on the table is a matchup that has actually never happened in the NCAA tournament before. The which ultimate, is completely which is wild bonkers. to me. It's bonkers. The history of these two these two teams and and the history of both of their uh, their runs in, in tournaments and national championships throughout the year, like the fact that they have never once met in the NCAA tournament up until now, it's like, huh? <laughs> yeah, these two teams need no further introduction. Duke, North Carolina, the ultimate college basketball rivalry coming to fruition in Coach K's last season in the final four where North Carolina came in and spoiled Coach K's last home game. Now Coach K has his chance for revenge on arguably the biggest stage. It is a perfect storyline unfolding. But before we go through predictions, 
let's let's see how these teams got here. Duke, they defeated Arkansas 78 to 69, where their last dance continues for a little bit longer, and they outlasted a gritty Arkansas team with a ton of fight. But this Arkansas team has a very bright future ahead of them. Even though they're knocked out, they just snagged their third five-star. So the must bus will keep on rolling and they'll look even better for next year. But that's not about them. Duke will move on to the Final Four. And on the other side... <sighs> the time the time it, came. It was, it was, it was bound time. to end sometime. St. Peter's, the miracle St. Peter's Peacocks, the, the little team from Jersey City that could, ran out of gas against the North Carolina Tar Heel machine, losing 69 to 49. I had picked them up until the very end. Yep. They made a believer out of me. Yeah. They made a believer out of America. St. Peter's is still America's team, but you have to give your hats off to North Carolina. They looked absolutely dominant. And even though they didn't shoot particularly well, it seemed like every shot was going in. You know, they Brady Manick, Armando Baycott, Caleb Love, those guys were doing what they were doing. They were rolling and they finally found an answer to St. Peter's offense and their defense. So for a team to finally crack that juggernaut, it was North Carolina and they've earned their trip to the final four. So as far as this matchup goes, Duke, UNC, Tim, who do you have? It's real interesting because it's like you, you, of course, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you teams, talk a little bit while I sip my Starbucks. <laughs> you've seen these teams face They're each other before, good. and like you look at, of course, the the matchup where where UNC came in uh, to end the regular season and spoil that that last home game. <laughs> uh, we like to have fun here on running really the good. table. Oh, you know it. Uh, they've played really efficient basketball as of lately. Um, I've liked what I've seen as the season has gone on of what Hubert Davis has tried to do with this North, North Carolina team and give them that real solid identity. Um, and they've really embraced that coming into this tournament. You've seen that with the way they've played. Um, the thing that I focus on the most is what they've been able to do defensively. Uh, they've been able to shut down a lot of teams in ways that we didn't necessarily see coming from their I would say their caliber of defense throughout the season. They really have improved on that majorly as the season's gone on. Um, and you've seen that as a bit of a, a focal point. Like you said, even when North Carolina wasn't necessarily shooting lights out, still managed to put up almost 70 points um, on St. Peter's. And then of course the amount of points that they put up in a lot of those previous games. But then you go and look at Duke and, and Duke has, was a team that was pretty, uh, a pretty popular upset team with some of the, uh, the teams that they faced throughout their, their run, but they, they proved that they, despite the inexperience and, and young guys that they have on that team, uh, they still very much are very talented. And I mean, it's Duke. They're always well coached. Uh, Coach K is putting everything he's got into this final run. Um, and they've played some really good basketball, especially in these past two games. Um, so it's hard to vote against them. But going into this matchup, I've got to stick with my instincts, and I'm actually going to stick with it one, once again another upset and send an eight, eight seed to the national championship and say that the, the North Carolina Tar Heels are going to head to the national championship to face Kansas. Wow. Ain't that It's, it's out there, but... Ain't that think, a pick? It's one of the, it's one it's one of these games and it's one of these matchups where throughout this bracket I've I've said throughout covering all these I've had to say I just got to stick with my instinct got to stick with my gut for something for some reason this something matchup tells about me it. there's something about it that tells me that North Carolina is gonna have gonna have some little magic here whether it's a, another Caleb Love massive second half or a crazy defensive showing I don't know is I just I feel like they're gonna have some sort of magic to to quell the the momentum that Duke has obtained throughout this tournament. Well, that's the thing about North Carolina throughout the specific games. You have had a guy or two having a crazy game, like 30 points, 35 points, yeah, like early in the Manic, tournament. Baycott. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. It's been a different guy almost every single yeah. round of it's hard the to predict. And even like without manic, as you saw, like, a depleted North Carolina team had a 25 point lead against Baylor 
Andy hey, Bedelli almost to blew it. They managed, they managed to hang on. A victory. Just when it looked like all the momentum was in Baylor's hands, they just just enough to turn the tides in, in that overtime period. So you got to give them credit where it's due. You absolutely have to give them credit. You know, the, the perfect storyline for Coach K is unfolding right before him. It's the perfect script. The yeah, perfect, it really is. The perfect fairy tale ending to one of the greatest coaches. The documentary producer in me wants me to, to, to go with Coach K for the for the documentary and be like, oh, we lost to him in the end of the regular season, last home game. Right. But now we've got our redemption chance going into the national championship. But I don't know. It's the perfect revenge game. <laughs> Too bad North Carolina is going to spoil it again okay i also I, wow. have, so we also wow. i also have north carolina moving okay. on to face kansas i didn't see that the national championship game look i thought with your pick over arkansas that you were gonna that you were gonna stick with them with the way they looked in that game north carolina has looked fantastic the entire tournament they were a team with a lot of question marks that has absolutely erased all doubt has demolished every every team in their path. Hubert Davis in his first season under the helm. Normally the inexperienced coaching, like normally that's a detriment, but there's always an exception to every rule. And this is actually Hubert Davis's fourth final four with the Tar Heels. He went yeah. once as a player. He went twice as an assistant coach. And now in his first he's year. He's been around the program man. for a long time. So, I mean, yes. he truly is a protege of Roy Williams. And, and I think that's really helped him heading into this head coaching job this year. He's had a lot of guys around him, very knowledgeable. He has a great staff around him. Um, and obviously some great players to work with in his first year or so. So, yeah, I mean... <laughs> As much as I would like to see Duke and Coach K finish out the storybook ending, and as much as you would too, who would have thought that we would actually have the same national championship? I really, game? I really thought that I thought that you were going to stick with Duke there. So I thought that my pick was going to be a little bit more out there. But honestly, what I'm more interested to see, let us know in the comments if you think that we are absolutely crazy going into this. Because I know a lot of people are, are are really high on Duke now. So yeah, uh, we, we let, could let be completely out of our minds. But that's why we do this. Yeah, like, hey, if any of you think anything different, let us yeah. know. But we have the national championship prediction of the Kansas Jayhawks and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Who would have thought? What a world we live in. But, Tim, do we have anything else for this episode? No, I don't think we do. I mean, it's been a crazy tournament, super fun to, to cover and look into all of these matchups and games. Uh, it's been fun to watch with all these, these upsets throughout so many of these rounds. Um, and it's coming to a close here soon, but uh, we still got a couple of more games to go, and I'm real excited to see how it turns out. Three more, the two final four games and the national championship. And don't worry, we will be doing a best of the bracket episode after that as we do where we wrap up the tournament and talk about, you know, what a fun ride this college basketball season has been because it has been an absolutely crazy one. That's all we got. We have other videos on running the table with other sports where we have baseball, we have NFL. You can like and watch us more on YouTube, or you can listen to us on Spotify, Google podcasts, and wherever podcasts are available. So until next time we out.